coaches and how every single day we have a choice. We have a choice that we can stay where we are at or we can learn and grow from our mistakes. And so today, I'm gonna to share with you some of the principles that I feel has helped me to become relentless in my vision of success. And I believe that it started with this. I have this very stubborn personality. Those of you that are close to me know that very well. And when I want something, I'm going to find a way. And on the day that I decided that I wanted to be a Team Beachbody coach, I went to my husband and I said, hey Matt, I'm gonna sign up to become a coach. And he was like, absolutely not. <laughs> those, those businesses, they don't work. If you wanna get a job, let's put the kids in daycare and you can go back to work and you can get a real job. And even though he couldn't see my vision just yet, I could see it as clear as day. You know, I was only 60 days into my journey with Beachbody. I'd finished one program. I was still about 25 pounds away from my goal weight. I had less than 100 friends on Facebook, no Instagram, no blog, no YouTube, no skills about social media whatsoever. But I could see it. I was gonna write a blog, I was gonna create, I was gonna use my personal Facebook page, and I was gonna share my journey. And I was gonna teach other women how to lose weight and feel great in their own skin. And I wasn't sure how I was gonna do it, but I was gonna figure it out. So. Matt wasn't gonna give us, give me the money out of the bank account. I was gonna take the money that my family gave me for my birthday that year, and I was gonna sign up to become a coach. And I did. And from the moment I hit submit on that sign up, I never looked back. There was no plan B. There was no, I'll give it six months and see what happens. It was whatever it takes, I'm gonna figure this out because I can see how I can make a difference. And I am going to find a way. And in that process of being relentless in my vision for starting my business, I like to say that I became a wrecking ball. Maybe you can relate to this, but honestly, I was so excited. I was oozing with passion and excitement for how to build this business. And all around me were people that were telling me that, that this wouldn't work, that I wouldn't succeed, that only the people that get in early are successful. And I was hell-bent on proving everybody wrong. But I started to become obsessed. Maybe you're gonna get a little nudge from somebody next to you, and maybe this is you. I get up in the morning and that's the only thing I can think about. I've got ideas just swirling around in my head of what kind of posts I can make and how I can make my social media better and how quickly can, can I grow my following. And instead of doing the laundry and cleaning the house and playing with the kids, all of my time was spent on the computer. My head was in my phone all of the time. At the dinner table, the minute that my phone would ring or ding, I would instantly pick up the phone and walk away. I was sending a message to my family that the person on the other end of that screen was more important than they were. And it came to a point where Matt said to me, hey Mel, you do realize like this, we're really off balance and this really isn't working out. And he kind of gave me an ultimatum. He said, you know what? You're gonna have to choose your business or you're gonna have to choose our family. And I can remember thinking to myself, well, no, that's not an option. We're gonna find a way to make it work. And I sent out, set out to figure out a way to grow a business and be a mom. And it took a lot of hard work. It took a lot of researching and learning personal development and becoming disciplined to set business hours and learn how to turn off the phone and create purposeful spaces in my day so that I was 100% present with my family, but also building a business too. And when people ask me if I would change anything about that, my answer is no. I wouldn't, I don't regret it, not for one moment, because I believe that I was given that obstacle to empower other women to know that they can build a business and have balance too. And I'm sure that there are many of you out there that are wishing for the next rank. And you're looking at your business and you're going, gosh, I really wish that I was further along than I am right now. You wish that you were a diamond or a star diamond. And then you say things to yourself like, when I become diamond, I'll feel successful. When I am elite, then I will have arrived. Then I'll be happy. And I remember wishing away my business. And always saying to myself, when I get to the next goal, then I will feel good. 
But here's the thing that I've learned along the way. Focus on the process. Instead of always being concerned about the goal, put one foot in front of the other and say, you know what? The current obstacle that I'm faced with, it's teaching me how to build a solid foundation for the next step. When I become a leader, I'll be ready because I struggled with inviting, because I struggled with keeping people engaged. I'm a better leader because of it. It took me nine months to get to Diamond. It might take you two years, but I just encourage you to put one foot in front of the other and focus on the process and the destination will feel so much greater. And you know what? As a business owner, we all come in to this business and we have to learn. I didn't have any skills as a new coach, right? I had to learn how to present the business opportunity. I walked around my kitchen, serving my kids their chicken nuggets at their, at their table, teaching, telling them you know, what coaching was all about or explaining to them what Shakeology was in three to five sentences because I didn't lack the confidence. And so I was a student at the beginning. And then at every stage of the game, there are opportunities for you to become closed off or to open up and say, you know what? I realize that I need to learn here. And I was about three months into my business and I had a coach or a customer actually tell me that she was gonna quit my challenge group. And she said, you know what? I can't be in your challenge group anymore. You're too intense, surprise. Um, you know, you never take a rest day, surprise again. Um, you never, you know, have any cheat meals and, and I just can't live my life like that. Like I really need balance. And it was kind of the first moment that I realized like not everybody learns the same way that I do. And I leaned into that and I said, what, what can I do? What personal development can I find that is gonna help me to mentor my people better? Personality Plus by Florence Littauer is that first book that I ever read. I sat in the backyard on a blanket and I categorized all of my customers and all of my coaches and then I went into my challenge groups and my team pages and I just tried different ways to motivate my people so that they would stay engaged. And in that moment, I chose to learn. And last year, right, I've been doing this business for seven years. I went to Entree Leadership and listened to John Maxwell, who is an incredible motivator and writer and speaker, and he talked about how he chooses to learn every single day, and how he's at the age of retirement, and he could golf and just enjoy life, and he doesn't need to work anymore. But he gets out his notebook, and he finds somebody to interview every day, somebody in the industry that is revolutionizing or is rising up in the ranks or is doing something different, and I thought, that's how I wanna live my life. And so I ask people to guest speak on my call and they always come in and say, you know, I just don't think I can tell your team anything else that you haven't already told them. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm gonna take notes. And I always learn from them. I always put myself in a posture where I can learn and grow from all of you. Because the minute that I become complacent, the minute I think that I have all the answers is the minute that I stop moving my business forward. And you know, there are points in our business where we have to refine our vision. And when I look at my initial goal board that I made, that I created seven years ago on that big piece of poster board, everything said I. I wanna be a success club all-star. I wanna pay off my student loans. I want to take my family on the success club trip. And then, there comes this time where we start setting goals for ourselves and we go, you know what? Those things, they just don't have as much meaning as they used to. When I, put, when I start writing those down, they just don't bring me joy. And I want you to be aware of that and understand that that's not a sign that you've maximized your potential here at Beachbody or that it's a sign to move on. It's really a sign that it's time to refine. And so I started making goals that were more we-focused and team-focused, and all of a sudden, I just felt this joy come back into my business, and I realized that as I refined this vision, my passion came alive, and I'm still doing the mission of helping other people achieve their goals, but it just looks a little bit different. <laughs> and this refinement process, or fear, maybe is what we call it, the fear of change, don't be afraid of it. It's gonna happen. And you know, as a coach, I always say that the number of failures that you have is more than the number of successes. Because the more times you fail, the more opportunities you have to get it right. And I think about my first 
six months as a coach and how I would put these social media posts out there and I would look at people in the organization that were getting hundreds of likes on a post. And I got none. And instead of saying, well, that's it, let's fold up shop, let's go home, I'm not meant for this business, everybody is right, this won't work for me, who am I to be a successful Beachbody coach? I said, no, let's take a step back. Let's look at this. And I go through this process. I put out an idea or I put out a post and it fails. It always does. Most of the things that you do are not going to work the first time. And you have a choice. I reflect. Was it too wordy? Did I, was it too salesy? Did I not give a clear call to action? Was my image not eye-catching? I'll ask for advice from other people. I reflect. I refine. And then I try it again with the same passion and intensity that I did the first time. And if I have to do it a hundred times, if I have to go through that process, I am gonna keep going that, through that process of refining until I freaking get it right. And that's the way that you have to look at everything from recruiting the people onto your team that you want, to running effective challenge groups and finding challengers, to your nutrition, to your fitness, to your relationships. It is this refinement process. It is not one gigantic leap from point A to point B but it's all the things that you learn along the way that shape you into who you are today. And the obstacles that we are faced with are an opportunity to grow. So I'll tell you a story. Last year, last year was a rough year for me. On addition to everything else, I noticed that my business that I had grown on my personal Facebook page and my blog they were 90% of my business came from my personal Facebook and my blog. And all of a sudden I noticed this traction shifted. And the same was doing the same thing, I hadn't changed anything, but my business was not moving along as fast as it had before. And I had a decision to make. I could say to myself, all right, I think I've maxed out, I think I'm done. You know, people were starting to say to me, oh, the market is saturated with too many beach body coaches. We just, you know, this business is old. We're gonna move on to something else. And I was like, all right, that is not the case. Because if you go out in public anywhere, there are people everywhere that need what we have to offer. And so I started to look around and I'm like, who in the business right now is nailing it? Who's getting success club points? Who's rank advancing? And I started interviewing and watching and asking questions. And then before I had it figured out, I went to my team and I said, look, I can kind of see that this trend is happening and I refuse to let it take us down, so this is what we're gonna do. And I don't have all the answers, but this is what I'm gonna do and you can either come with me or you can stay behind. And I led and I just got down in the trenches and I said, look, we're faced with an obstacle and I gotta figure out how to grow and I'm gonna lead my team. And this past year wasn't about growing a new platform for me. But the obstacle actually taught me who I wanted on my team. That when the times get tough and when challenges are presented, the people that believe in the vision and the mission of what we do, they're gonna be the people that are gonna stand beside you. They're gonna be the people that have your back. And when you go through peaks and valleys in a business, you're gonna find out who your real tribe actually is. And I feel like last year, I learned that. You probably wouldn't know that on the outside, but I feel like from this point forward in everything that I do in life, I want to work with people that have overcome obstacles because I know that they have what it takes to follow their dreams until they succeed. So I'm going to leave you guys with this. There have been a lot of things that have happened over the past seven years, right? A lot, of, a lot of obstacles, a lot of growth, a lot of change. And sometimes we're in the moment, we don't quite see how it's all gonna work out. But last year, as I was sitting in the front row of Saturday Night Summit Celebration, my youngest, Bryce, started to have a little bit of meltdown in the front seat. And I was feverishly digging through my purse, trying to find, you know, something to give him, so, you know, um, a snack or a drink so that he would calm down, he was tired. And I heard Carl, and he was starting to announce the next award winner. And he was talking about this girl that used her birthday money to sign up to become a coach. 
And I thought to myself, eh, that's not me. And I just kept going back to what I was doing, right? And, and the more I started talking, started talking about this person that makes a great contribution and they, they have all these YouTube videos and they, they put great content out to the network and he announces me up onto the stage. And as he announces me and I walk up onto the stage, it was like that full circle moment. It was that moment where I realized that this isn't just a job. I'm just not helping my team or my customers, but I'm making an impact and I'm leaving a legacy for other people and the obstacles that I have been through are helping somebody out there crush their dreams and never give up. And when I looked back in the audience and I saw Matt and I saw the boys and that face, their faces, I knew that Matt was proud of me. I knew my boys were proud of me. And I was proud to be Matt's wife and my boy's mom. And I know that I'm teaching them great life lessons. And I know that all of the things that we've been challenged over the past seven years are growing us into who we are becoming. And I'll leave you with this. It is not about the accolades. They're great. They help us get there. The diamonds, the star diamonds, the success club points, all of those things, they are amazing accomplishments and they're growing you. But it's about who you become in the process. It is the legacy that you are leaving behind. It is the opportunity to make an impact in somebody's life. And this process, it refines us into incredible human beings. And I can't think of a better place that I wanna spend my time is right here with all of you doing the job that we get to do every single day. So I want you to know, I was relentless. I will always be relentless in my vision. And I believe in each and every one of you and your ability to be relentless in your vision for success too. So let's go out there and make it happen. Thank you so much, guys.